In this video, I get to go inside the fences on a photo day at a wildlife park. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today we've come to the British Wildlife Centre. And we've come on a very special day because this is a day that's closed to the public, but open to photographers. So if you're a wildlife photographer, you need skill as a wildlife photographer. You need a fair bit of luck as well, and you need to be in the right location. But if you want to try your hand at wildlife photography, a photo day like this at the British Wildlife Centre is the ideal time to hone your skills and get some wonderful photographs as well. Not only that, but you also get the assistance of people like Tom, who is our keeper here today and is going to help us get some great shots. And we started here in the red squirrel pen. So uh, let's see if we can get some good photographs. <laughs> so with the help of a keeper, you can get brilliant shots that otherwise would actually be quite hard to get because these little things are quite quite shy but when they know there's some food involved and the right food of course then um, they're, they're slightly less shy it's really lovely so we can actually get really up close to the little squirrel here and actually get some really nice intimate shots which if this place was was crawling with the public might be a little bit more challenging although this guy i think would probably be friendly whoever walked through here don't run off now, I said that, will you? So there we go, we got some nice little photographs of the, the little red squirrels. Needed a bit of patience because they are quite shy animals, but nonetheless, with the help of Tom, our keeper, coaxing them out, we've managed to bag some brilliant photographs. So let's move on to the next location, see what else we can find. So we move round into the fox enclosure and Tom, our keeper, is uh, busy trying to find the foxes, which are hidden amongst the undergrowth somewhere. But as you can see, possibly we're actually inside the enclosure so we're in the part of the enclosure where public don't normally get to go and that's why the photo day like this is such a good idea you get to go inside the enclosure with the animals foxes not a vicious animal not sure i'd want to try this perhaps with a lion but uh, hopefully with the fox will be okay so let's see if we can go and find some great pictures of foxes Now, as far as the gear I'm using today, I'm using my Canon 60D and my 70 to 200 f 2.8. This is a perfect lens for this sort of wildlife day, because normally when you're doing wildlife, you want a 400 millimeter lens, but because we can actually get in so close, we can use a much shorter lens, uh, which is more comfortable, it's more affordable. But if you haven't got a lens like this and you want to get one, then don't forget you can always rent the equipment. Adorama Rentals, for example, will do a great deal on renting the perfect lens for your wildlife shoot. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Come on. Hello. <laughs> so you can see from here, I can get some fabulous photographs really up close. Tom's doing a wonderful job bringing them over. They're still running around and they're still being a bit of a challenge to photograph, but not that hard. And I'm getting some great shots. It's just fantastic. Hello. Come on. So because Tom's got so much control over these to a, a degree, you can actually bring them in. I've got a few moments just to experiment with different depths of field by changing my aperture. So I'm trying wide open F, 3.5, something like that. Stopping down to f8, which gives me more depth of field and gives me a different picture. Hello. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. Now, it's very tempting to keep stopping and looking at the pictures I've just taken, but this, this isn't a time for pixel peeping. This is a time for photography. Plenty of time for checking photos later on. Probably not a time for talking to the camera either. Let's take some more photos. Come on. Now, as with any kind of photography where you're photographing people or whether you're photographing foxes in this case, the focus needs to be on the eyes. The eyes need to be sharp, they need to be in focus and clear. So that's what I'm focusing on. I've got my camera set to its center only focusing point, and that's on my camera, the, the 60D, the quickest, fastest, sharpest point to choose. And that I'm gonna put right on their eye every time I take the shot. I may just recompose slightly, but I always want that eye pin sharp. So there we go, I've got some great photographs in the bag. Now all I need to do is just take my favorite picture into Photoshop and we'll do a little bit of editing and we're gonna do that right now. So I took a load of pictures at the Wildlife Center and it really was great fun. And this is the one that I want to work on. I think this picture's got a bit of character. So let's close that down because that's where we're gonna end up. And let's go and reopen the raw file as it came off the camera. As you can see, it looks very similar to my final picture. And that's one of the things about your post-processing for wildlife. Generally speaking, the amount of post-processing you do to wildlife shots isn't gonna be that great. Wildlife photographers like to keep things pretty much as is. However, there are a few general adjustments I can make here and still keep the integrity of the picture. First thing is cropping. Does the picture need cropping? And I think it just needs a little bit of cropping. So I'm gonna get the crop tool. I want to keep the format of the crop the same as the photograph, so I've chosen the two by three crop ratio. And I'm just gonna crop this down something like that. I think that just gives a more comfortable crop. Okay, next is the, well, is it in focus? Let's actually check that. In fact, I really should have checked that first. So let's just double click on the zoom tool and that will take us into actual pixels and we can see, yes, the eyes are nice and sharp. I'll double click on the hand tool and that'll take me back out again. So, yep, I'm happy with this. Let's continue. It's a sharp shot. Now, it looks just a tiny bit cold to me. I want a bit more warmth because there was some nice uh, early evening light coming across. So we'll bump up the temperature a tiny bit. It also looks just a tiny bit underexposed, and particularly in the shadows. It was really contrasty light. And if I increase the exposure to compensate in the shadows, I'm starting to lose detail here in the highlights. Just a, a little bit, but enough to, to, to really trouble me. And if I really bring it up to where I want it to go, now the highlights are looking much too bright. So to compensate, I'm going to get the highlight slider and I'm going to bring it down. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit like that just to recover the highlight details. And if you're in an older version of Photoshop Camera Raw, then that was actually called the recovery slider. It wasn't quite as good. It is certainly more powerful in the new versions of Photoshop. OK, now what else do we need to do? Well, any, any, any changes now are going to be really small, subtle changes. So a little bit more contrast. Clarity. Well, of course, I'm going to put some clarity in, but just a little bit. I'm going to leave it in the teens. This isn't a time to go crazy with clarity. I want a nice bit of clarity on the uh, on the fur, but I don't want to go unreal. Vibrance. Well, I am going to boost the colors because I do think a, a nice boost in colors is uh, definitely going to work wonders here. And I think we can just pull up the shadows just a little bit further, just so we get some light, particularly in that eye. So there we are, that's my changes. If that's uh, the before, that's what I shot. And there's my afterwards, which is just a bit brighter and a bit more colorful. Not a massive change. Now, because I've moved those sliders quite far, it's worth just having a close look and just checking for noise. There is a little bit of noise, as I might expect. So I'll jump to the detail tab and I'll just reduce the noise down a wee bit like that. 
Now, the only things that are really bothering me, and this is a pictorial thing, there are two blades of grass just underneath his chin there, which are in the same plane of focus. There are other blades of grass, but they are so blurry you can't really see them. Now, there's a couple of ways I could deal with this. Because I'm in Photoshop CC or Lightroom 5, I can use the new improved spot removal tool. And this is really good. This just gives me the chance to, uh, let's go with a bigger brush, and just paint over something as a line rather than the spot. And it'll use spot removal to remove it. Of course, it doesn't always work. So if it doesn't work, Control and Z. Maybe we had the brush just a little bit too big there. And we'll just go and do that again. There we go. Down we go. Yep, that's fine. You see, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's the story with cloning and healing. But that's absolutely fine. So I'm happy with that. I could do the other one here as well, but let's do that in Photoshop and show you how I used to do this in older versions before Photoshop CC or Lightroom 5 came along. And it really was exactly the same. It's really a matter of grabbing the spot healing brush as my first tool of choice and just painting over it. But I always go in little steps. So build the effect up slowly. Just removing parts like that, and it'll slowly disappear. If the spot healing brush doesn't work, there's always the good old clone stamp tool just to, uh, to go over and be more accurate. But generally speaking, that works just fine. Okay, so there we go. There is my wildlife picture completed. Well, it's been a fabulous day here at the British Wildlife Centre. I'm really pleased with the photographs and being able to go the other side of these bars really does make all the difference. If you're ever down this way, come and look them up. Come and find out when they're running a photographic day and visit. Now, if you want to find out more about me or the other brilliant presenters here on Adorama TV, then don't forget you've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.